Welcome. In today's Charting the Markets, we are looking at candlesticks, what they do, how they work, and more importantly, how to apply them in everyday settings. For this, we're joined by Patricia Albers, an independent technical analyst and lecturer in TA Studies here in London. Patricia, good to talk to you. Good morning, uh, Thanks Charlie. indeed uh, for coming in to talk about uh, these candlestick patterns. Before we take a look at them in some detail, what I want to get from you is a perspective on the, how long we've been using them, what they mean uh, in the context in which we use them. Right, so candlestick patterns, I think if you go to any dealing room today, the, bar, the chart you'll see would be candlesticks. Rather than bar chart or point and figure, it would be candlesticks. It's become very, very popular. So it dates back to 1700, used by Japanese rice traders. The person who started was called Homer, not to be confused with Homer Simpson. Um, <laughs> so Homer was meant to be the person who started, and that's where it comes from, rice trading. Uh, Steve Neeson is the one who actually introduced it to the Western world, and that was around the 90s in his book. Um, and according to him, they didn't really start trading till 1850. So really for all of us, I think beginning of 90s was when everybody started looking at candlestick and say, what does it mean? What does that mean? A, a star a engulfing. So that's when they really came to light. Okay, you've mentioned two sort of candlesticks there, but let's go back to basics. Uh, you've, you've, you've given me some um, uh, graphic slides here which yes. indicate what they mean. Introduce us to the concept. Yes, so to have a candlestick chart, essentially you need four prices. So the open, high, low and close. So if we look at that, the bar chart gives us exactly that. Now if you look at the bar chart at the top and the candle underneath it, you can see quite clearly it's more visual. So what we have is the body of the candle. What a body does is the difference between the open and close. And that's why it's called a candlestick. It looks like a candlestick. And then you see the upper and lower shadows which show you the high and the low. Right, also called them wicks? Yes, totally okay. called the so, wicks. So yeah. that would fit in neatly with the, the, the candle um, yes. aspect. What are the pros and cons of using these? You say Steve Neeson brought them in 30 odd years ago to yes. our, our modern way of thinking of technical analysis. But what are the pros and cons? So the pros, as I said, very much a pop-up. You can see visually very quickly if it's a green candle or sometimes it's white, empty candle, you know that the close is above the open. You know it's a bullish signal. Mm. Um, on the other side, if the close is below the open, you've got your red candle and you've got a bearish signal. So the pros is that it's quite visual and easy to see. And people like that, the fact that you can actually see. And we're going to see in a little while how you can use candles together to show some kind of trading signals. Mm. What about the drawbacks though? So the drawbacks, um, essentially you're waiting for the close. So there so you, is you, a you don't, you don't get a colour until you... Well, Correct, you yeah. don't get the current candle. Yeah. Although some people do use them for hourly even. Right. So you would have the hourly close. Right. Or, but a lot of the time daily are very popular, in which case you are waiting for the close of the daily charts. Mm. And also so you've got the, you know, the lagging and the di indicators which can actually be lagging. And this is considered one of the lagging ones in a way because yeah. you are waiting for something to happen first. You, you mentioned the hourly, but of course I've also seen them used weekly, monthly, quarterly, I think indeed you can get yes. candles, can't you? So what does that indicate? Yes, so you can use them. I mean, let's say you use them, as you say, monthly. So you're looking at the open, high, low, close of the month compared to the previous month. Mm. And if you cover this whole month and you're closing higher, you're looking for something which is called a bullish engulfing. So you're, you're trying to compare candles. Right, right. Okay. Let's, let's move on and take a look at um, one candle patterns. Now, a little bit later on, I think you alluded to this talk about two candle patterns, but here we are. Very simple. But we start off here with the doji. Um, explain what's happening. So the first thing we look at with the doji is there is no body. So there is no difference between the open and the close. So that means that they're at the same level. And this is why we have something which looks like initially doji style, which is a cross. So the market actually went up, down, closed at the same level as the open. In terms of what it means, it could be uncertainty because there's no clear direction. You've mm. come back to close exactly where you opened. So doji is actually very important to look out for. Uncertainty, possibly reversal as well. 
Mm. So you don't, you don't know here whether the first move was down, giving you the wick on the downside, or the first move was up, do you? So uh, the, despite the fact there's been cl um, um, trade either side of the opening yes. close, you don't know uh, whether there was an initial rise or fall. Correct. So it's good to see where they are at which mm. level. We're going yeah. to look at some examples. Yeah. Okay. Hanging man. Hanging man, I mean, funnily enough, a lot of these patterns are very logical. So they try and show something which is logical. So it's uh, the top, the, the longer wick on the bottom doesn't hold, and then you actually close at the top. Mm -hmm. Quite a, a bullish signal there, because you're actually trying to just see if, you know, you're open and you close at the top. So hanging man, look out for something like, um, you know, something which could be a reversal, just look out for some kind of reversal. Right. In this case, for example, here for, in the hanging man thing, what happened was that even though the market was going up quite sharply, um, if you like, the close was towards the high and you had quite a low. So in this case, let's say you're coming from the market which is going up, so you've mm -hmm. got a reversal. Right. So in this case, you actually would look for I always think when I see a hanging man, look for the next pattern. Right. Is my next pattern going to be a bearish candle? Right. In which case, I would actually be saying, okay, we've got a clear sell signal. Okay, so that's, that's confirmatory. So, that's a confirmatory. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. So the, we are looking often for confirmation. Yeah. And this is why you don't always get the move straight yeah. away. Yeah. So hanging man, just look out for some kind of confirmation that maybe we are. Mm -hmm. Out and there. presumably the reversal for gravestone or tombstone, I've seen it mentioned as, as well, this uh, doji candle. Yeah, so doji candles here, gravestone. So you're, you're closing at the lows mm. and just mm. watch yeah. out again here. Yeah. They're all kind of signals that possibly um, there's a pause. So yeah. doji patterns are quite important. And the long-legged one, I mean, it's the same as a star, but it's just got very long wick. Yes, so exactly. So you're coming back to close towards the top here yeah. in this case. Okay, let's, 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 let's change this onto a chart so we can get an idea as to how to apply these. This, is, uh, this happens to be the US dollar against the pound, but of course, I mean, obviously these candlesticks apply to pretty much, well, every single tradable chart in the world. Yeah. Explain what's happening. Yes, yeah, so in this case, I think what's interesting on sterling dollar, when we got to above 132, um, for a while we had, can you see, a series of highs and then we have this doji pattern forming. So at that stage there was a kind of pause. It turns out that it was a reversal. Yeah. So it's quite interesting to see, you know, the doji didn't give us a clear, um, it wasn't a continuation, it was a pause, strong resistance and then the down move. And the one which I think was quite significant is the doji star which we saw just under 128. Right. So here again, you have a pause, resistance, and what I was looking for there is the, actually the bearish candle the next day. So that would tell you that. Which was the confirmation. A confirmation, exactly, of that move. Yeah, okay. Let's move on to your, your next uh, chart that you've got here. And this um, it opens up the hammer and hanging man that we've, we've sort of seen, and the yes. doji becomes one with a body. Yes, totally. So uh, effectively on these hammer, you have to have a very small body, meaning the open and the close are actually not too far from each other. It has that kind of formation. And what does it tell us? That the down move wasn't carried on. You've got the move on the close on the upside straight towards the top. Reversal and what I'd like to see after a hammer is a bullish candle to give me that confirmation again. Right, OK, this happens to be green, the number two happens to be green, is that significant? Oh, you've got red one here, hanging man. Yes, so even though I've got the bullish one here and the hanging man, I've got a bearish one, you can actually have a hanging man where the, you have also a green candle. OK, so I'm just showing you as an example. Right. But in any case, the hanging man would be a bearish reversal. You're reversing from this move. OK, um, without getting too confused, we have here very similar sort of candle shapes. Again, colours here, uh, shooting star. Yes, shooting star, a reversal signal. And what happened here is that you cannot carry on with the highs. So even though you set a high for the day, the pressure came back on the downside and you're closing lower and you're, you're hedging lower. So once again, we've got a reversal signal here. What I'd like to see is a bearish candle following it. Right. And what's a marabuzu? So marabuzu, a lot of the times we mention that 
um, the explanatory. So marabuzo means a shaven head. So this is, this is Japanese? <laughs> right, correct. Right. So it's a shaven head and what it's saying is that it doesn't have the wick, so it hasn't got the high and the low upper and lower shadows. Right. And what does it mean? Effectively it means that um, let's say in this case I've put a green one, uh, I put a red, one, a red yeah. one which is a bearish one effectively it means that you're actually closing at the open so you've got the open the market went up and you're closing at the lows you're closing towards the lows so quite a bearish signal often you see quite strong bearish signal like that you don't make a new low you're actually closing at that level Right, okay, let's put these into some sort of, uh, of context. This is uh, Euro right. against the US dollar. Um, you've got uh, several of these hammers and hanging men here. Just explain yes. how, what's going on. Yes, so the hammer there, which we saw around the, well, it's coming quite low at the moment as well. So mm -hmm. just above 111, 11130, we had a hammer formation there. What's interesting is straight after you had your strong bullish candles. So the hammer there, which showed potential reversal, was carried on and followed through. So the actual market actually went, you had this small body and then you had the reversal bullish signal there. So that was a positive indication right. and that's exactly what we got coming out of that. In fact, that's pretty much a, a Marabuzu candle following that hammer yes. at the bottom there. Yes, totally. You have it on the top, especially we don't have a new high, so we don't have the high uh, wicks, so you yeah. have got that. And then you've got the hanging man there. But what's interesting there in this one is that even though we had the hanging man formation, meaning reversal down, it actually set a couple of highs the following yeah. days. So you didn't get your clear sell signal. <clears throat> and if you were trading just off that, it would depend where you put a stop. If you put well, your stop on the previous candle, yeah. you would have been okay. Yeah. I was going to ask actually about yeah. stops in this. Going back to the hammer candle at the bottom there. Yes. Where would you, assuming it's the bottom of a run, where would you put your stop because you've got no close, in this case you do have a close reference point with the spike level yes. um, a week or so beforehand. But because you're at the bottom of the cycle, how yes. difficult is it to place a stop? I would put definitely my stop below the low. So where the right. hammer's formed, I would put my stop just below, not right. at the low, I would just put it just below the low. So in this case, something like 111, 20, something yeah. like that would, yeah. would do it. Okay. In terms of the hanging man there, um, I think if I was to put my stop just above the high the of the hanging high, man, I would yeah. have got stopped out. Yeah, indeed, yes. So that wouldn't have worked in that case. But that being said, yeah. ultimately, it has done what the hanging man suggests you should be doing. That is saying. Yeah, what it didn't do is the turn straight away. Right. Mm. So it's like everything else, watch out. It's not the only yeah. thing which will give you the trade. Look at other things yeah. in conjunction. So, so the hammer and the hanging man essentially are the same shape. They just occur at different points of the cycle. Totally, <coughs> totally. Shooting star. Okay, so the shooting star here, what happens there is that we've got a reversal signal again. So in this case, it was around below 130, around uh, 130, 112.80. And what we had was that the close was towards the lows and you had a very small body. Yeah. And then you had the follow up with a very bearish candle. Yeah. So if I was trading that and I was putting my stop just above that, I would have been okay mm. in this case. So it didn't actually go up first, it went straight down. Okay. We've been talking about one, uh, one candle patterns. This is introducing two candle patterns with haramis. What's a harami mean? So a harami, it's a candle inside a candle. Right. And what you have is, if I look at the bar charts, I always like to compare them to bar charts so that it's logical. It's an inside day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So an inside day is trading within the previous day's range. There's nothing, um, not imp no important data, no important activity, no important things which will actually push you through the previous day's range. So logically, harami means a pause. So the colour is important here? The colour is important, definitely. So in this case, a bearish harami, you're trading within the range, but in this case, you're closing lower on that candle. Yeah, okay, let's put this into some sort of uh, context. Yes, so if we look at cable here, and it's, that's a really interesting one we had to look at, just below 132, you had your strong bullish candle followed by a candle which is bearish, but not just that, it's within the range. 
So at this stage, you'd question it. Is it going to break through? We haven't broken the range. Is it a Harami? Right. So if I was translating that in bar chart, I would see an inside day, which right. is often a warning signal that there isn't enough strength to push higher. So in this case, a very good yeah. turn here, a very good reversal signal. Right. I'm interested as well to quickly go on to the next one because this is the reverse in as much as we've got here an engulfing candle. The second day's of the two-day candle pattern is larger than the previous day. Yes, and uh, to, for it to be totally, for it to be engulfing, you have to cover the whole candle. You have to cover the whole range. And if we look at bar charts, it's like a reversal, a key reversal day, key reversal mm -hmm. week. You're reversing the previous activity. And these are, I've seen so many of these engulfing patterns, which have worked very well on charts. Does the body of the second candle have to be outside the wicks of the previous day, or is it just a question of having the body bigger than the previous day's body? I think bigger than the previous day's body, but you also have to go through the whole highs and lows. Yeah. So you have to engulf the whole range. Right, OK, fine. Um, and just before we take a look at this an example, uh, this is an interesting one because when you're on a, a trend, you quite often get uh, candles that are stagger. Yes. And we've got, two, um, we've got two staggered candles here. Yes. So the dark cloud, it's kind of very, very logical. They like to have their logics. A very mm. bullish day and a cloud sets on there. So what does the cloud mean? is going to be a turn, possibly, possibly bearish. And what's important here is the second candle has to cover more than halfway. So that's right. quite important. If it just covers the top, we couldn't call that a dark cloud cover. It has to cover more than halfway of the day's activity and close towards below the midpoint. So that's quite important. Right, and the reverse, the piercing pattern. Piercing pattern, you're piercing through the lows. Mm -hmm. You actually have the lows, but you're piercing through the lows and you're heading higher. So in piercing, I wouldn't mind seeing a bullish candle the next day to confirm my, my move. OK, let's take a look at a couple of examples uh, of these. You've got here dark cloud and a bearish engulfing. Yes, on so Euro Euro, on Euro dollar. So the dark cloud, can we see we had a, it's quite interesting that Dark cloud came in just around one, where was it, 120. Mm -hmm. And um, I also like to see psychological levels. So it was around one, 112, the psychological level, around 112. And then you had the dark cloud, which came in there. Mm -hmm. And followed by three bearish candles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was a good, you know, that was a good signal. Um, you would have put your stop just, if you say, just above the top of that candle. That would have been a very good signal. Mm. Um, bearish engulfing here around 114, you broke through previous highs, previous lows, and this is the important one, closed lower. Right. A little bit of consolidation following that, but that was a short, yes. short trade indication, and you're in the money. Yes, short uh, totally, and then you had that move. And then just more recently, it looks like you've got a very long bearish candle and some you know, just under 112 to be, you know, always, always look also at trend lines yeah. with them. Don't look at them in isolation. No. I well, I was, I was going to ask as a final follow-up question on from this is, yes. is whether you do use this in association with other oscillators or indicators or momentum, volume, yes. moving averages. What, what, do you, what do you do personally? I personally would use them Definitely, I, I use them with momentum. I right. try and look at the RSI and stochastics and see if I can get some kind of divergent signal. And I like to use them more as a confirmation. Mm. So I would probably make my decisions on the divergence, but I would use these as a confirmation, a doji and a reversal. I said, OK, so I, am I getting a sell signal as well? Mm. Is it below my 20 day moving yeah. average? So yeah. very, very good to use them. Know their limits, which is important. Yeah. Brilliant. OK, nice introduction. Thanks indeed for joining us. Thank Patricia Albers, Independent Technical Analyst and Lecturer here in London in Technical Analysis Studies. That's today's Charting the Markets.